Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, now we are going to call for our daily bread. Praise God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Join me right now as we release our faith in declaring this word. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I began yesterday sharing with you on how to use the Bible. And I said some profound things yesterday. And I'm going to continue from there today. And that is telling you what the Bible is. Understanding, first of all, that the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the Word of God, what they did with it, and how they ended with it. So the Bible is a book of stories. But you see, the beautiful thing about the Bible is this. Everything written in there is truth. Now what I mean is truth. There are things that happened. There are experience people had. No one concocted a, 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 a story and just decided to write it. They are real experiences that people had and they documented these things. Praise God. So, so now, knowing this, see, because you find people who, who do all sorts of things with the Bible. For example, when we go to a law court, they say, Oh, Christian or Muslim or whatever you are. I say, oh, I'm a Christian. And they bring the Bible and say, put your hand and swear. And you put your hand there and say, everything I'm going to say is the truth, uh, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Now, what's the idea behind putting your hand on the Bible to swear? What is the idea behind it? Now, the idea behind it is, is the belief that this book is the, a very powerful book that if you place your hand on it and tell, go against what you have just vowed to say, the power in that book is going to fight you. And that's the idea behind it. Praise God. It's the idea behind it. It's the same idea behind people putting the Bible under their pillows to sleep. Now, I know, no, you're the good one. I know you put your, your Bible under your pillow so you can easily bring it out in the morning and read it. I know that's why you do that. Fine. But you see, there are people who put it under their pillow so they will not have bad dreams. Oh, yes. Praise God. There are people who, you know, sometimes they are praying, they feel they need to hold the Bible. So you see people do all manner of things because of what they are understanding is of what the Bible is. So they just feel this book is a book of power. Hey, there is power. The book talks about the power of God. But let me show you a scripture. John chapter 5 and verse 39. This is Jesus speaking here. And he said, John 5, 39. He said, very interesting statement. He said, you search the scriptures. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Now, the scripture, which is what mostly we refer to as the Bible today. Now, that's another day's talk, but let's see how this will help us go into those explanations. So, the, the, the scriptures talks about eternal life. And Jesus was talking to those Jews. And so he said to them, you are always searching the scriptures. Why do you search the scriptures? Because in them you think think you have eternal life. Just like what many people do till this day. You think by reading the Bible out, it will work for you. You think by quoting the Bible, it will work for you. You think by holding the Bible when you're praying, it will work for you. Jesus said, these ones actually search, not just read, they search. 
But look at what he says. These are they which testify of me. The scriptures testify of Jesus. Now, <clears throat> okay, let's finish this up. Verse 40 says, But you are not willing to come to me that ye may have life. Now, this is this Jesus was telling them this is a big error in their generation. But hey, funny enough, it's still an error till this very day. He said, you are busy searching the scriptures. That's what you do. Why are you searching the scriptures? Oh, I'm looking for life. The scripture talks about eternal life. If we understand the scriptures, we will have eternal life. That's what they thought. So you always find them quoting the scriptures. You always find these Jewish rabbis, you know, always memorizing scriptures, always talking scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? They, they can memorize the whole book of Jeremiah. And they'll be talking, and it shall come to pass. They are doing all those things because they think knowing these things will give them life. But Jesus boldly said here, that's not where the life is. <laughs> the scriptures is testifying of him. What is the scripture testified or what does the scripture testify of, of him? The scripture testifies that he will come and he will give life. But here these guys are like we still do today. He has come. He is right there with them. He is even calling them, come receive life from me. And they quarrel with him. How can you say such a thing? Who are you? Are you not the carpenter's son? Don't we know your brothers and sisters? What are you talking about? Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him. Now, <laughs> what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Remember, the scriptures testifies of Jesus. Now, those are what we call scriptures. It's not every writing in the Bible that is scripture. Now, this is not to confuse you. I'm just trying to make it as simple as you can understand it. The scriptures are words that testifies about Jesus. But well, here is another big mistake we make, and, and those are things that get me concerned that the Lord finally said, okay, I want to talk about this. The scriptures testifies about Jesus, that Jesus will come, and when he comes, this and this will happen. But you see, for many generations, we are stuck. We have been stuck on one spot. And what is that spot? Jesus has come. Yes. But then, we don't realize that there is a life after Jesus. Oh, praise God. You see... The scriptures tells us about Jesus coming. The scripture always also tells us about what he would do. And after he's done what he would do, there is a life after that. Now that's the life that we are called to live. So, the coming of Jesus was to give life. That's what Jesus said here in, in, in John 5, 39 and 40. He says, you will not come to me so that I will give you life. Meaning, he testified that he is the giver 
of life. Now then, these folks would not go to him. They didn't like him. They were expecting something else, but I wonder what they were expecting. And sometimes Jesus spoke to those elders. He says, hey, you err because you don't know the scriptures. You err because you don't know the scriptures. So you make mistakes. Your thoughts are wrong. Your conclusions are wrong because you don't know the scriptures. I'll give you an example. In Luke chapter 4, from verse 15 or 16 or 17. Jesus walked up to the temple and the Bible said, as his custom was, meaning before that day, he goes to the temple, maybe the same temple, maybe elsewhere. But, but we, we, we were made to understand that that's where he grew up. So that was his hometown. So he went to the temple and they gave him the scriptures to read and he laid it there and found the portion he was supposed to read now I want you to follow this carefully maybe we should look at it Luke chapter 4 verse 16 so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue of the, on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, I don't know if they told him where to read. Or they just handed over the book of Isaiah to him. Now, because then they didn't have a whole Bible like we have now. So they had different books. So, hey, read. Here are the scrolls of Isaiah. Read it. Now, we, we were not told if they told him specifically where to read. Or they just gave him, look, find where to read and bless us. So Jesus picked up this book. Opened it up. And he found a specific place. Follow me now. Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, he had, he, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, look at verse 20. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. Follow now. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Maybe he did something different that he, they normally do from what they normally do as, as lay readers. He, he, he read this portion, closed the book, handed it over, went down to sit down. Watch this now. And... Because most likely he was supposed to explain afterwards. But he didn't. He went and he sat down. So everybody turned and was looking at him. Okay. And look at what happened next. It says, verse 21. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Are you, did you see that? He read that portion. And then he said to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled to your hearing. Meaning, the reason Isaiah wrote this that I just read to you, the day has come. So the scripture was testifying about him. But now he's announcing to them, the one Isaiah is talking about has come. So today, it is fulfilled. Praise God. Our time is up for today. Listen, I'm just going to be taking it step by step and continue. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that the Spirit of God will help you and open your understanding beyond the words that I speak. 
He will give you understanding of these things and help you walk and live a better life with Him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Step out today and have a wonderful day. God bless you. Bye-bye.